Hey, this is Eric from Bay Fiber Studio, and today we're going to be taking a look at the latest Mahi painting, fresh off the easel and on the wall. Stay tuned. So we're jumping in a little bit further than the very beginning of the piece, but it's still pretty early on in the process. I just forgot to turn on my camera equipment. Uh, so three things have happened in addition to the work that I'm doing right now. Uh, a lot of wax has been applied to the background of the piece when it was still raw white fabric. If you're interested in learning more about that wax application process, uh, check out some of the other videos in my channel. And that's what you see, that kind of uh, milky color around the mahi. Then the piece was submerged into an ivory bath just to give it sort of a, a neutral ground and help it stand out from the background from the white that'll be the background of the piece and then something i don't do a lot of is i direct dye direct painted on some turquoise dye to give it that mottled uh, spotted look that's really characteristic of a, of a brightly colored mahi that's just been pulled out of the water so after that initial immersion in that ivory color this piece took a unique turn in that besides the fact that my big bald head is there is that you have this piece dyed almost entirely in two separate colors simultaneously because there's uh, a lot of golden and yellow colors in the ventral side of the fish and then there is a lot of you know blues and deep greens in the dorsal side of the fish and in order to preserve both of those colors individually, uh, they both had to be applied simultaneously. And if you're pausing like, whoa, did he just say ventral side and dorsal side of the fish? Well, yeah, it's not just the pretty bright colors I like to study. I'm a fan of studying the fish anatomy as well in order to make them as accurate as possible in the end. But that's pretty much what you're going to see from here on out is a number of different iterations of yellows and golden colors being applied to the underside or the ventral side of the fish. And then a number of different turquoises and blues and navies being applied to the dorsal side of the fish and the bullhead of the fish in order to create a number of different striations in yellows, blues and greens that are so indicative of a brightly colored bull bull mahi once you pull it out of the water. And if you look real closely there in the face of the fish, you can see there's still a lot of work to be done, but you can start to see some of those details that I was drawing in the very beginning start to emerge with a deeper shade of yellow that's been applied onto the fish. So now you can see those first two iterations of yellow and blue have mixed and also dried, and you can see that the colors do uh, brighten up, but also lighten up a little bit, especially in the case of the blue that looked really dark, but you really just got to know the colors that you're applying and how they're going to interact and change over time. Uh, the colors do dry a little bit lighter in value. So what I'm doing here again, this is part of the process where you really just have to trust yourself and, and know the form that you're trying to create. All this is being free handed in, uh, protecting the colors that have dried now on the surface of the fish. Uh, in order to take it down to a darker value. So it's a little bit different from the typical uh, immersion dyes. Their dyes are being immersed, but they're being immersed uh, two colors at a time in order to let them kind of run their course. So the goal here is now to protect those colors that I just dyed. The colors that just went down onto the piece need to be protected from the next colors that are gonna go in. Think about if you've ever done a watercolor painting, when you layer one color on top of another, those colors are gonna mix. They're not just gonna uh, lay on top of one another. So you have to be aware and plan out in the beginning how you wanna get from the beginning of your piece to your final image. And in this part, it's all about blocking out those brighter yellows, those brighter greens, and those brighter blues before we move into the deeper values that are gonna go on next. So this is that traditional process of protecting what you've done in the previous step with a layer of wax that gets melted into your piece to protect the colors that have just been applied to it. Once those colors are dry, you protect them, and then you put them in the next color in order to build up your next color layer. Everything's applied freehand, so you really have to have a good idea of the shape and form of the subject that you're trying to recreate. Uh, and any mistakes, you just have to mess it up, dress it up, as I say. Go with it and hope that uh, you can work it into the final image uh, in, in a tactful kind of way. So here you can really see just how bright and vibrant those colors can become once you really get a handle on how to apply them to each of the pieces. 
And at this point, you might be thinking, well, that's good enough to me. You've got a good range of colors and some good values in here. Design looks all right, and that's it. But what happens here is once these layers really start to build up and you build some even deeper values, the uniqueness of this process really starts to take shape over time. And unfortunately, you can't rush it. You just have to trust in the process and, and also hope in the process that it's going to come out looking somewhat like you want in the end. And there's always a little bit of mystery, uh, but that's what keeps it interesting in the long run. So we're back here for the second round of yellow and blues that are going on. Uh, remember, the colors do look a little bit darker in the beginning. So even though this looks more like a, a, a lightish brown color, it's going to come out a really golden yellow uh, once it dries, uh, just from experience, knowing how that's going to interact with the colors underneath of it. And you see I'm pouring it on. What's happening here as I pour it on is it's actually going to reactivate some of the blue dyed some of the blue colors and the green colors that are up in the dorsal area of the fish and make those colors start to to move a little bit more reactivate them in that way and doing the same thing with the blue kind of pulling leaching the colors up and down in opposite directions by adding in uh, subsequent layers of the dye and you can also see up there where, where I'm pulling it with my hand, you can see some of the cracks that have formed in the wax that's in the background. And those cracks, think of them as kind of like microscopic Grand Canyons. Those are places that uh, little rivers of dye are going to seep into and create that marbled look. That's a characteristic of my illustrations. So just going in here with more and more layers of dye, uh, what we really want to do is really saturate it so that it's wet enough to stay wet for longer and let the dyes uh, do their work and brighten up as time goes on. So what I really wanted to do in this piece was figure out a way to do a pour with yellow and blue but still maintain those primary hues while also getting a good mix in the middle. So a little bit of different process, still doing immersion dyes, still doing a pour process, but instead of pouring the entire piece, uh, controlling it a little bit more in terms of where I'm pouring each of the colors. Wait a minute now, I know you're thinking, didn't you just say that you're doing simultaneous yellow and blue pours on this one? Well, I was, and now at this point, I've done two more yellows and two more blues, but they get a little bit repetitive after you've seen one, you've seen enough. Uh, so at this point, I moved into the darkest. This is a navy blue. Uh, this is gonna go through two more color iterations. It's gonna get this navy through to really pick up uh, the darkest blue colors I can. And then I'll apply wax to the entire mahi, except for a few select areas like behind the gill plates and in the pupil of the eye, just to get a little bit darker black value in those few select areas and also pick up blacks in all of the marbling and all those canyons of the background that I talked about before. And at this point, there's nothing left to do but get this piece cleaned up, get all the wax off of it, and get it prepped for display. Uh, this piece is mounted on an ACM panel with some gel medium, and then finished off with an acrylic varnish. And I know I've been working at uh, getting better at my videography, but uh, one thing that I am good at is photographing my pieces. And so here you can see it in all of its glory, ready for display. At the time of publishing, this piece is available on my website, bayfiberstudio.com, but it probably won't be available for long. Again, this is Eric from Bay Fiber Studio, and I hope you enjoyed watching. Please subscribe if you want to see more of my process and my illustrations.